Hey everybody, so uh, in this tutorial what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to break down and decompile a bit of concept art. So this will be pretty interesting. First thing you're going to need is a little, <coughs> little program called Carapace uh, made by an Epic employee. It's a, it's a perspective program, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing, since I'm guessing probably a lot of you will be new to this program, is uh, you can press F1 to pull up this little dialog of instructions. And come down here and uh, load a background image. That's what we need. So Control I. Let's go ahead and do that. Control I. Got a specific concept, our image. Now we got it here in the little editor. Alright, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at the uh, image and just find perspective lines. So let's go and see here. This would probably be a good one. So right click and drag. You'll pull out this uh, little blue line. And here's another line. So let's go ahead and pull that. And now you'll notice this little um, dialog up here, and it says Control Shift one through nine. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift one, and then you'll notice a one comes up over here. You can move it. I'm not going to because I don't want to move it. Um, you can also press Alt one, and what that'll do is uh, it'll remove that. A uh, little point. I also notice there's a bunch of blue lines, and that is uh, the perspective grid lines. So um, we got one in place, and let's go ahead and do another. We're going to need is uh, <coughs> we are going to need a cross section. So let's go ahead and grab this one. Make sure it's lined up. Boom. Let's go ahead and grab this one. Boom. Now, instead of doing Control Shift 1, we're going to do Control Shift 2. Now, bring up a second grid point. And now we have one more, one last one to do. So, it's uh, the horizontal grid line. Let's go ahead and do that one. And let's go ahead and do this one, maybe. No, I like this one. Okay, I think right about there's about right. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want it to be fairly accurate. What is it? Control Shift 3 now. Okay, so um, you'll notice nothing came up. That's because our grid lines are, or the perspective is too tight. So let's go ahead and do Alt 3 get rid of that. Let's try again. Maybe I'm not doing it quite right. Make sure it's lined up. I'll try it with this. Make sure it's lined up and I think that's fairly accurate. Let's try it again. Control Shift 3. Control Shift 3. Didn't work again. Gotta choose a different perspective line. There's not a whole lot of options in this particular concept art because a lot of this stuff is not, I guess, round. Or it's a lot of it's round, so let's see if I can't find something. Generally speaking, you want to find stuff that's really far apart, which I was not doing, so let's hope this works. Okay, Control Shift 3. Control Shift 3. at all. Go ahead and do all three. Alright. One more time. Bring that up there. That's pretty horizontal. I don't like that. Making this perspective very hard to work with. Um, It also might be the concept artwork because sometimes uh, 
people don't get perspective completely correct in uh, when they're making concept art, which is always possible. I might just tilt this a tad bit just to get the grid lines in here. I don't like it a whole lot, but it's better than not having anything. I might reduce that a tad bit. Let's go ahead and that again, maybe about there. And then come over here, bring that up, control shift three. There we go. Okay, once you have your grid lines in place, like I do here, just hit control C and then we're going to take our work into Photoshop. Now what we do is let's go ahead and create a new layer, control V, and let's go ahead and control, no that's not what I did before. Um, let's go ahead and select color range white Okay, and let's go ahead and delete that out. Yeah, that's that's better. Not the best thing in the world, but let's go ahead and bring down the opacity a bit. Let's go ahead. Not entirely necessary, but I like creating groups and keeping a nice clean hierarchy. So this is a uh, grid lines. Drag that in there. Call this group perspective. I'm going to close that up and just uncheck that. All right. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do. This is where things get a little bit more fun. Um, this isn't my f all time favorite thing to do, but it's uh, pretty necessary. So let's go ahead and start off with um, creating a new group call it block out and inside that group let's create a new layer and let's name it oh um, let's name it large assets this this particular concept image has distinct large assets like this versus distinct smaller assets like the monitors, these little panels which will probably be textures, and some piping and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and do large assets and what we're going to do is we are going to pull up this little color palette thing, color picker. Let's go ahead and pick um, uh, I don't know, red. I guess red's okay shouldn't be a problem. Alright, now you can zoom in. Let's go ahead and use the polygon lasso tool. And let's go ahead and just draw this out a little bit. And if you guys have more effective ways of doing this very same thing, go ahead and by all means go ahead and do it. I just use this way myself. doesn't have to be as clean as mine either. Alright, so now that we have that, let's go to the paint bucket tool and paint that in. Alright, so now we have this giant red spot. It doesn't look particularly good, it's not really helping us, it's uh, quite frankly not pleasing the guy. So let's uh, flip it over to overlay, and it um, actually looks surprisingly good right there. Let's see what the uh, door slam shut. See what changing the opacity looks like. Um, yeah, maybe something like that. Let's go ahead and go into the um, layer styles and not in color overlay. Um, let's give it an inner glow. I, I like inner glows in this case because it just it nicely highlights the atom. Let's go ahead and switch this to overlay so we can get a better I don't know, maybe not overlay. Uh, what was 
the screen. Yeah, this on the screen before. Let's change the color to red. A little lighter red. Maybe something like that. Gives it a fairly nice highlight. Increase the size. Change the size a bit. I don't know. I think that's good. Anyways, the whole purpose is to really just highlight the different assets that you're going to be making. So we got that, and we could do all of these, but I don't know if that's entirely necessary because it's essentially the same thing. Um, let's go ahead. Those are going to be the smaller assets. This background is going to be a big one, so let's go ahead and do a quick outline of it. You can do this, like, just go around it and what it'll do is it'll create a nice little um, um, it'll create a nice highlight that uh, works really well for this because um, it'll actually uh, for whatever reason it balances out well with things that are highlighted right next to it it creates a nice separation is what I'm trying to say I'm having a hard time talking today um, yeah we can go ahead and cut through here I think not too much of a big deal go ahead and guess where it's gonna be at doesn't have to be exact because it's a rough block out mm, actually I wanted it to go that way dang it Shift click. Go on right there, go on right there. Oop. Right, that's looking quite a bit better, almost there. Let's go and clean it up a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and paint it. And now we have that asset kind of painted. Alright. So that's to the larger assets. Are there any other particularly large assets? And I, I see one right here. This is probably going to be uh, this is going to be a model for sure. Um, more specifically, I mean, it's going to actually have depth to it. It's not going to, I don't think I'm going to make that a texture. Uh, I think I'm going to actually model that out in the scene uh, to get some extra depth information. So let's go ahead and just circle this. notice the effect is already there and that is because we have it in the layer so that's always nice now let's see what other do we have any other large assets um, maybe this pipe maybe um, stuff that isn't particularly detailed as more of a large portion of the scene. Maybe maybe this back room. This maybe this entire wall actually. This has a lot of detail in here. Um well not a lot, but it has enough detail to warrant putting in the large assets, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, 
Yeah, we'll just save that for another layer because that doesn't work. So, anything else? I think it's worth noting that that is a door, and I didn't realize that. So, um, hmm. I need, I'll need to highlight that somehow. That is a big, big engine thing. Anyways, so I think those are the two major. Um, assets in here that are going to be drawing the most attention. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this Detail Objects. And let's go ahead and change this color to something maybe maybe yellow. I, I think yellow looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and hide our large assets layer. Uh, layer. Um, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and circle this because this is a. Uh, hold on. Let's go ahead and do it from here so I can see the entire bit. Alright, let's go ahead and paint it. And. Change it to overlay. Bring it down a bit. Let's go to inner glow. Change it to a green, or not green, a yellow, lighter yellow. Let's go ahead and. Hmm. Doesn't affect it a whole lot, I see. Size. There we go. There we go. It's a nice highlight. Maybe can't see it in the viewport. Okay. Well, I think I think that looks pretty good. So that's the uh, floor panel. Um, probably get this floor panel too. Just kind of go around these assets because we're going to be doing those right over here, right there, right there, right there, and over here. There we go. Got a floor, and let's see what else we got. Okay, so there's a lot of extra detail, like piping and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start by going up here, just doing a rough outline. There we go. Okay, so that's kind of what you do for the for the smaller assets. Now another Im very important step is uh, coming up with another layer and I usually just call it nonsense because you always have to question um, is there anything in this scene that just doesn't make sense. I was just working with a concept art uh, a little concept the other day where there was some light shining through a window but then it was shining in a completely different direction in another shot or another part of the picture. So you gotta look for those logical fallacies and so you don't actually make them yourself when you're uh, working on a concept. Generally in a professional environment you don't have to worry about that but um, if you're just looking around on the internet for uh, a concept image to um, to work with to make a map or something like that then you gotta make sure that there isn't a mistake like that and generally it's good uh, to check anyways because we're humans we make mistakes so uh, um, it's hard to gauge whether or not there will be mistakes or not from just looking at this I think for the most part it looks pretty good um, I don't see anything in particular other than maybe some um, 
mistakes in the painting. Maybe it's not a big deal. These are some really round edges. Um, nothing particularly wrong with perspective, I think. Nothing wrong with uh, any other details. Except for maybe that valve. That valve doesn't make a whole lot of sense being on a panel like that, so I might just circle that and. Let's paint it. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to red again. It doesn't really matter to change up colors, but I, I just do. Um, I don't know, because I like it, I guess. I like having a different color. Just bump down the opacity, call it a overlay. I think that looks pretty good, I think. Yep. Alright, so other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and un uh, or go ahead and hide that. Now, generally, what I do is um, I would normally do this before the block out and after the perspective, but it doesn't matter a whole lot. Let's go ahead and do uh, rules of third. Since this is a concept uh, piece, we know that um, people are generally uh, taking a f photographic like um, approach to making their concept. So, uh, third. so it's very easy to tell what someone is trying to make you look at. And so, let's go ahead and draw out the lines. And it doesn't have to be exact, of course. I mean, it can be. Uh, it might help, but usually an eyeball will do it. If you don't know what the rule of thirds are, in fact, I think I just, yeah, I did. Oh, look at that. I didn't do it right. That's okay, though. I'll just draw these out. And the rule of thirds. Actually has a third point there, I believe, if I remember correctly. Let me just double check to make sure I'm right. It's been a while since I've done this. No, just two. Alright, so I actually don't need that. Bring that over, bring that over. I think it's actually right there. Alright, so rules of thirds. The rules of thirds basically state that um, a picture w with the subject in the very center makes for a very uninteresting uh, picture. It doesn't really work well. It looks amateurish. It doesn't. It's just not good. So what they do is they offset the subject to one of these lines, um, and it's stated that generally. Um, when the subject lies on all three, or not all three, one, two, three, yeah, all three of these rules of third lines, it'll make for a, uh, the most interesting picture possible, which is not always, always the case, but it's a good rule of thumb to go off of. So offsetting the image will make it very interesting, but what we can use that for is we can see what the uh, the artist was trying to get you to look at. So what he finds most interesting is this, and it's sort of obvious in this picture, but uh, it's important to do this with all your uh, concept art um, that, you, that you get, um, particularly uh, when you're looking off the web and stuff like that, um, because, well, uh, it allows you to see what they're trying to focus on, which therefore should really come off in your own level designs. So um, I, I don't really know if that's the case with a lot of more professional in-house stuff, because a lot of times concept art that's just being concept art for the sake of being concept art uh, is a little bit more based in photography rather than 
um, game mechanics or game design. But either way, this is a good place to start. And usually what I do is, since these rulers are not permanent, I go ahead and go here. Let's just go ahead and go with a light blue and just go over this line, hold shift, drag down. Then you can go ahead and then pull this off. And once you deselect it, you can see you have a line there. So let's go ahead and shift, drag this over. Not shift, drag, sorry. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. And then shift, drag. So now we got that one done. Now it's the same thing down here. So let's go ahead and back, go back to line tool. And go ahead and shift, drag over duplicate the layer and then shift there, let's, see. let's get this out of the way shift to drag this down oh what is that hmm duplicate oh that's why duplicate that layer no don't duplicate the layer let's uh just create a new layer. That's what I messed up on. Alright, draw that out. Then we got that. And it's not even really necessary. You can just do it again. So let's do that. Now, get rid of these lines. And we have a rules of thirds. Now, what we can do is. I don't know. I think I'll keep them editable. Alright, so now we have these nice blue lines that do not really. Eh. Oh well. They don't really stand out well from the background, but I guess that's okay. You can still see them. Anyway, so our subject is clearly this engine thing. Uh, I think it's an engine, maybe a weapon, but most likely it looks to me like an engine. I would like to think so. So, what I do from here. It's just hide the perspective, hide the uh, rule of third. Let's go ahead and drag this up so it's up there. And what I would do is I would finish getting in these detail objects. And after that, I would actually um, go in and do one more thing. And that is uh, I would create another layer and call it um, decals and this is just stuff that is l like littered on the ground or stuff that can be done without actually any doing any modeling so uh, let's see if we can find anything like that and you know right off the bat I can see that there's probably not a whole lot of stuff maybe a little bit of graffiti but I don't know if that even really makes sense for this scene I mean how could someone honestly get up to that pipe and right up there, it's kind of uh, a, a bit silly, honestly. Um, let's see. I don't particularly see anything. Maybe a warning sign or uh, something. I don't know. If, I think I'd probably do that in the texture, though, but just for kicks and giggles, I might as well do this. I'll do it blue since we haven't done blue yet. Uh, inner glow. Go ahead and bring that up to blue. Maybe a turquoise. Um, I think that's okay. Let's go ahead and change this to overlay. Yeah, that. Oh, whoopsie. Uh, overlay. There we go. I think that looks really good. So um, it doesn't work well at the background, but that's okay. Um, decals, decals, decals. Um, I don't see anything else. I think everything else I would actually put into the texture map. Um, there's no scattered papers or trash or anything like that. So um, I think with that being said, I think this is pretty much done. And once you bring it all back together, you can kind of see. No normally, you don't put them all back together, like 
at the same time you go back through and it's like okay so um, what decals do I need to make so you turn on decals and you're like oh there's a sign there's some trash there's whatever or you would go in and be like there's we need to make some detail objects we need to refine the scene so then you go in and start making all that stuff these and generally stuff like that and so uh, I think with that I don't I don't think there's anything else really uh, anything else really to do here it's pretty much done I need to go in and do all of this stuff but um, I think this tutorial is done and uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoy it uh, please like comment and subscribe thanks everybody I enjoyed this one